wrote uh, and, and hurt you uh, in terms of um, if you're not um, you know, an evil person or something like that. Uh, but uh, they're not going to kill innocent people or anything like that. Uh, but they are, um, they are, um, they're interested in righteousness. They're totally interested in righteousness. And uh, they're interested in the message in, in the Messiah. Anyway, um, so yeah, I should have done a scroll class, I suppose. So Amos, um, you see, these kings are before the disaster in the north. So, actually, you see that the coming of the Assyrians caused an, out, an outpouring of prophecy. That's not exactly true because here are some who came before. But Amos is one of the only ones. Amos and Hosea are the only ones before. After that, they're all after. Isaiah, a bit. Uh, now look at this. He's a shepherd of Tekoa. Where is Tekoa? Tekoa is in the south not far from Bethlehem. It's out towards the Dead Sea as you go out from Bethlehem uh, to the plain uh, south and uh, east of Bethlehem before you start to descend into the uh, into the uh, divide, the below sea level sort of place at the, at the, uh, where the scrolls were found along the Dead Sea. Um, so I have actually there are Jewish settlements out there. That's what's called settlements that everyone wants to uproot. I don't know why anyone wants to uproot anything. These are flourishing settlements where people actually are farming and have been living for several generations now. And they're not blowing up buildings and cutting people's heads off and doing this sort of thing. They are people who just want to get on with their lives. So because a lot of other people burn buses and burn suburbs and do all this uh, sort of thing that we get a lot of attention in the news. So we feel that this is the reason that we must uh, placate them in order to uh, give them like you would throw a bone to uh, some, uh, some hungry uh, creature of some kind. Uh, and um, this Tekoa that I've visited is a lovely place today, but it's one of the places that will be uprooted uh, if there is a final peace settlement whereas it shouldn't be. The final peace settlement should let people stay where they are and uh, allow uh, people to go on about their business in the context of where they live. And um, if a, a person wants to be a part of the uh, Arab entity, so that person will choose to be part of the Arab entity. If they want to be part of the Israeli Jewish entity, so they'll be part of the Israeli Jewish entity. There's no reason why you uproot places and say it can't be one people can't live there and only another person can. That, that's ridiculous. So Tekoa is, I recommend you're visiting it if you get a chance. It's a lovely little settlement, they call it kibbutz. And it's very, uh, very lovely. Of course, you have to run the gauntlet now, maybe if some people are shooting right out with the guns at you if you're on, on the highway. But most of these people are, go back and forth every day to these places and don't have a lot of trouble. So I, I've not heard anyone really, um, I think someone was killed there in Tekoa a couple of years ago. But that's not a lot of violence, really. So he's a southern prophet, is what I'm talking about. And he's prophesying two years before the earthquake, whenever that was. So, is this an authentic text? I think it is. How do I know? Well, we'll look at it and see. Yahweh roars from Zion and makes his voice heard from Jerusalem. And shepherds, pastures mourn, the crown of Carmel weathered. I don't know what all the images mean. I don't know what the crown of Carmel means. It really, uh, you must have asked me, because Carmel is supposed to be in the north near the sea by Haifa today, but I don't think it's that Carmel he's talking about. There have been several places called Carmel. However, I think, uh, I guess Elijah is portrayed in Mount Carmel. I don't know if that has anything to do with that image. But the main thing is the Lord, Yahweh, God, Jehovah, whatever you want to call him, is in Zion. That's where he is. The southern prophets, the prophets are almost all southern. The prophets are almost all pro-southern, pro-Judah. The prophets are um, very nationalistic. The prophets uh, identify 
the seat of the Lord Jehovah with Jerusalem. For three times and for four of Damascus, I have made my decree and I will not relent. Now look at this little image here. Because they thrashed Gilead with iron threshing sledges. So Damascus, which was a, in the Genesis story, the place where they built a little monument between uh, Laban and uh, Jacob, uh, sort of out that way, uh, what would be called Aramaic. Uh, we speak of Armenians today, but I don't think it's Armenians of the modern kind. It's Aramaeans of that time. Though Armenians further north consider themselves descendant of some of those groups, I don't think it's exactly the same, but there's a connection uh, in language, perhaps. In any case, <clears throat> you see, Gilead was destroyed, it looks like, according to Amos here. Gilead is the three Jewish tribes across Jordan, and they were destroyed by the Damascus uh, by the Damascus um, regime, which makes sense because Gilead is neighboring to Assyria and Damascus. And uh, so you see they thrashed Gilead with threshing sledges, which means they, they really did a heavy duty destruction job on them. And therefore, the house of the king in Damascus is called Hazael. I am going to hurl fire on the house of Hazael and burn Ben-Hadad's uh, palaces. Um, I think uh, he had a son by that name. And I'm going to break the gate bars of Damascus, and I'm going to cut the one enshrined at Birkat Aben. Now, Birkat Aben would be a, like a, a Bikat Aben. Uh, probably, um, you might have a translation in your Bible. Do you have something for Bikat Aven? Prince's Valley. What? Valley Yeah, I don't know what, but I think it's a shrine. It's someone enshrined, and, and, and it's um, Aven would be stone, and therefore they're not going to give it the credit of, uh, of the name of a god, like Bethel, for instance, the house of God. I would assume there was the name of a god originally uh, that that represented. And he's just going to call it, you know, like, Birkat nothing. You know, I'm going to break the gate bars of Birkat nothing. And the sceptered one, another god, obviously, at Beth Eden. Um, I have a footnote, uh, two place names meaning valley of wickedness and house.